I know technical problems are going on, but we're gonna, you know, technical things are going on, but I'm gonna read this speech. A short speech I wrote while I was jotting down ideas or, or things, and, uh, and then we'll let the master do her thing, okay? So hello all, and welcome to our event, Byron Katie Comes to CSU East Bay, The Work and School Stress. This event is being produced by the sociology department here and myself, Dr. Donovan Caesar. Uh, I also go by the name Donnie. Feel free to call me Donnie. <laughs> this is part of the social emotional learning component of my classes, where my students and I discuss mindfulness meditation, questioning thoughts and feelings, learning about how our inner world shapes how we perceive the outer world, and developing open-mindedness. As a discipline, sociology is all about having an open mind to understand how life is constructed. And this is what initially attracted me to Byron Katie's The Work seven years ago. I saw one YouTube video on the issue, I Feel Unlovable, and was so moved by the process of questioning that thought that I taught all my students how to do the work the next day. Well, seven years later, and a million judge and neighbor worksheets, thousands of students later, who the hell would have thought I'd be living in California, meet Miss BK in person, and have her here at my job to work with my students. This is not only an amazing opportunity, but also the culmination of a personal healing journey and a professional grounding in valuing the role of emotions in one's inner life as part of the teaching learning experience. Things that often we don't, we don't do as professors, right? I had a realization one day that despite academia being a place where you can learn the most complex kind of underwater astrophysics, you may rarely, if ever, be taught what is a feeling. How do feelings work? What is love or self-love? We all acknowledge that these things are important to having a healthy life, but somehow they get left behind for other priorities when we are in school. And since most of us are in school for at least the first 18 years, and some of us like me forever, <laughs> never being taught these basic things can really do some serious damage as we attempt to build our adult lives. Hmm. Stress is a subject that is not new to anyone here in this room. Think about what you feel, what comes up when I say the word stress. We are all very familiar with the stress of our lives and the stress around getting an education. How many of, of us here have been so stressed out that we neglected our health, even to the point that we got sick? <laughs> How many of us chose to avoid people going out or being social because we were too busy? How many of us put work above listening to our feelings? How many of us put work above taking time to rest or relax? How many of us have gotten so stressed out we started doing unhealthy things like drinking or smoking weed all the time? How many of us have gotten so stressed out about work that we were too stressed out to actually do any work? We all want an education so we can be successful, but let's face it, school can make life very hard. The number of students seeking counseling is 30% more than it was in 2010. The biggest issues are anxiety, depression, stress, family issues, academic problems, and relationship problems. At worst, school stress kills. These stresses can lead us to suicidal thoughts or actual attempts. One in five students have thought of suicide, while one in 10 have actually attempted it. And these numbers are all generally worse if you are a racial ethnic minority, have a disability, or are LGBT. Far from being a carefree environment where we learn to find ourselves or party hard, school can become an unrelenting torment of never getting enough done, not succeeding as well as you would like, and always struggling to get by. Constantly dealing with homework, 
figuring out how you're going to pay for classes and make ends meet, adjusting to new life experiences, managing work and school, and dating relationship problems can be a source of chronic stress, which can leave us feeling chronically in panic and are paralyzed. Those feelings are probably very familiar to many of us, right? Maybe even this week, you may have had an experience of feeling chronically paralyzed or in panic. And let's be honest, often this feeling of chronic stress didn't start with our first day of college. Even 45% of high school teenagers report feeling stressed all the time. Many of us have had a lifetime of impossible expectations placed on us by others, parents, and teachers who pushed and pushed us to fit their definition of success and trying to do it all or be that perfect kid, student, young adult. Many of us are first-generation college students, so our parents expect us to do what they didn't. So our success or failure turns into their success or failure. Since our parents just want us to be successful, we often can't turn to our loved ones to talk about how we really feel. The ongoing stress of just being a student and a young person can become so regular, we normalize it. We don't even see it as stress, we come to just see it as life. Am I making sense here? Am I speaking? Yeah? Okay. By doing this, we only further harm ourselves, creating a cumulative mountain of stress that only makes students more vulnerable to mental health risks. As a college professor who has a PhD and soon to be three master's degrees, I have had the privilege of being a student for over 30 years. So I can recall my own journey in dealing with school stress. I can vividly recall a time when I was 20 and all I ate were ramen noodles. I survived on about 20 bucks a week and I was so busy attempting to double major that I broke up with my boyfriend even though everything was going well. I have been so stressed out in graduate school that I had a mental breakdown every six months and would spend a week in the park after finals just lying on the grass and looking at clouds to reset my brain. Now, as a professor, I still struggle with overloading myself with work, unrealistic deadlines, and disconnecting myself from people, my feelings, and my other life priorities. They call it workaholism. I spend so much time working that lately I complain about even having to go to the grocery store. Now, I became a professor because I have a passion for talking about social issues and working with younger students, but the realities of being a professor that I work with a stream of constantly stressed out young people. Students who are barely able to stay awake are fidgeting so much they can barely stay in their seats. I teach a course in sociology of education where we regularly talk about our educational experiences and one of the biggest findings of that class is that students are so stressed out, so caught up with thoughts like just get through this, preparing for what comes next, and just trying to pass, that often in class, very little actual learning takes place. Oh, I'm seeing lots of nods there. Oh, good, very good. School becomes more about surviving something you feel you have to endure than it is about getting to know yourself and valuing the education you are getting. Two things made a significant change between my days as a student and my time as a professor in terms of my stress. One is that I finally make enough money that I eat well, get monthly massages and pedicures, and can afford to attend spiritual retreats and seminars. But the other is that I came to see that my thoughts about school, my worries about my future, my judgments about who I was supposed to be, and my assumptions about how much or how little it would take to get there, that was what caused me stress. I was creating my own stress. So today, we are here to learn about a process for dealing with our stressful thoughts. While we often cannot change what happens in life, we can always examine our feelings and what we are thinking and believing. Byron Katie was a woman whose life was succumbed by stress. Despite a comfortable, stable life, she increasingly became depressed, agoraphobic, and was constantly yelling at her children. One day, while sleeping on the floor, a roach crawled over her foot, and in that moment, she came to realize that the roach was real and all her thoughts were not. The roach was real 
and all her thoughts were not. All of the things that were causing her stress were her thoughts, and that if she didn't believe her thoughts, she didn't suffer anymore. Through this revelation, she has come to develop a process for inquiring all of our thoughts through what she calls a judge your neighbor worksheet. By writing down your stressful thoughts, asking four questions like, is it true, and turning these statements around in various ways, we can actually take the thoughts we are having and use them to help us live a more peaceful, live a life with more peace, understanding, and love. Things that can only help you achieve a meaningful education, not just in school, but also in life. Without further ado, here is Byron Katie. So since this is a, a very small group, yeah, turn it on. Just turn it on. Just turn it on. There's a little button up there. Since this is such a small group, why don't we all move in together, like over here on this side and just get closer? Thank you. Yeah, so just fill in the chairs here so we're tired. Okay, so I'm just going to cut to the chase here, okay? So close your eyes and think of a person in your life. Doesn't matter who, just notice that a person will come into your mind's eye. And then as you notice that person, just wait for the judgment that happens. Like I think of my mother, and then I think she never really cared about me. Okay, so you can think of one of the professors here, you can think of one of your teachers, you can think of one of your, your classmates. It doesn't matter, your brother, your sister, just notice what comes to mind. Notice who comes to mind and notice the judgment. Just wait for the judgment, notice it, and then move on to another person. Wait for the judgment. So how many of you experienced that uh, a person came to your mind? Okay. So who was the person? You don't have, it was he or she or? Your mother. Your mother. Okay, mother came to mind. What was the judgment? Uh, she, she always uh, tries on my brother, but it's just more like hurting him more than helping him. So it's, yeah. So she hurts my brother more than she helps him. Yeah. Okay, you see how I narrowed that down? She hurts my brother more than she helps him. Or she tries to help my brother because you're holding the rest. You've got that story in your head. Okay, so how many of you have known someone in your life that tried to help people but it didn't work out so well? Okay, yeah. So, um, who came to your mind? Uh, I struggled actually with the image. Uh, I struggled with the image because um, I couldn't really pinpoint a specific person. What was the judgment? Um, sorry, I, I didn't okay. uh, get to it, yeah. Yeah, that's why we're all here. We're all here to support each other, okay? So it's, our minds can be very, very busy or very, very blank. And someone came to your mind? Uh, actually, I, <laughs> I'm a professor here, uh, and uh, I thought of the chair of our department. And the judgment, um, just to be honest here, <laughs> the judgment was uh, um, that I'm not a, as important a faculty member in the department as, as others. 
Thank you. So is, is, this, is this as accurate? He doesn't value me at the level he does well, what you said. I just want you to understand how to shorten it, but not take the power from it, okay? Like, I have so many judgments about my mother, but I notice one, it doesn't matter if there are a thousand, I notice one and I just grab that one. She doesn't really, she never really cared about me. But I could go on and on and on. So I've isolated one judgment. Okay, so this is a practice in um, how to identify the thoughts that are causing you stress. Okay, so open your folders to, um, I think the, the last page is, um, I complain about. Now, we sat in, a, in, in meditation this morning, and um, so if, hmm, if you can, I invite you to get really still, wait for a judgment, the person's name and a judgment, and simplify it. Bring it to it, the simplest form without missing the meaning, and begin to take the person and the judgment from your head and list them, one belief at a time, one judgment at a time. So let's do that, and uh, we all agree what we hear here stays here? Yes. Okay, and you can say he and she so that, so that you don't have to get personal, no one has to know that you know who you're talking about. Okay, so let's, let's begin. This is where meditation pays off. This is what interrupts meditation. And notice the ego doesn't really want to give it up. You know, just notice and just thank it for sharing and invite those judgments in. We've been taught not to judge, but the mind does it all. A classmate, a family member, government. Politicians, people in authority. So think of those of you having trouble, just think of a person's name, write it down and wait for the judgment. And invite the ego to give it up. Just let it feel safe, just give it up. Bring it on. Again, we've, we've been taught not to think those thoughts, they're wrong, they're bad, but nonetheless, there they are. So we lead these secret lives under a lot of stress. Pardon? Is it just about other people or can you um, have complaints about ourselves? If you, the ego is too good at that. So let's, let's, this is about yourself because these judgments are coming from your own head. So that's, that's a very common tendency. We want to start with ourselves because we're so practiced there. 
but this will get to it, the way we're doing it. We're just kind of going through the back door. complain about blank because so who would volunteer to um, to read one of the judgments out loud. Thank you. So my first, my first one was my current boss. I complain about you know my boss because he doesn't really discipline his employees when they need to be disciplined. So I complain about my boss because he doesn't he doesn't discipline employees when they need to be disciplined. Okay. So hold that one. Thank you. Did you find one? Mm -mm. I complain about Marque because she doesn't value me as a friend. I complain about her because she doesn't value me as a friend. How many of you have experienced a thought like that? Okay, so what we're learning from you and from you and from you is there are no new stressful thoughts. They're all recycled. This is not a little thing. You know what it means? I've had that thought. You know, around parents, they should discipline their children when they need discipline. Their children are running wild and disturbing. And so in my own way, I've had that thought many times. OK, and yours. So who else would volunteer? Yes. Yeah, I got a little riled up doing this too, you know. It's actually fun. <laughs> Once you understand how people work, you are going to have an amazing life. Because you are no longer at war with this crazy head. You begin to understand your head. And that will give you a life that I cannot describe. There's a word for it. It's called freedom. Well, I won't say this person's name, but uh, I complain about my coworker because uh, he's so ego-driven and full of himself, running his own agenda, that he makes me feel uncomfortable. Okay, so he is running his own agenda. <laughs> so there are several judgments. Yes, yes. I compiled them all in the one sentence yeah. there. Yeah. So. Uh, he's so ego-driven and full of himself, running his own agenda, he makes me feel uncomfortable. Oh. So, you can, can you all see him? This guy, he is ego-driven. He's just ego-driven. And he makes you feel uncomfortable. Is that true? Oh, you see this guy? You've never met him. You don't even know he's talking about it. You can see that ego-driven person in your mind's eye. Okay, but you're there. And he's driving you what? He makes you feel uncomfortable. So he makes you feel uncomfortable. Okay, now look at the bottom of, um, look at the four questions on your notebook. They're right on the back of the notebook. There are only four. And when you practice it, they become automatic. He makes you feel uncomfortable. Okay, you see him in your mind's eye, he's doing his shit. He makes you feel uncomfortable. Is it true? In that situation, anchor there. That's the key. Anchor there. In your mind's eye, be there now. He makes 
as you were explaining this, that feeling, that tightness comes up regardless if he's there or not, even in a casual conversation with some other person. Yeah. 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 Just walking by his door. Absolutely. And it just builds and builds and builds. You see walking, walking past the door, and you also see a You want a little fear and terror, get a future. You want a little shame and guilt, get a past. But you're not doing it on purpose. It's a happening. It's happening. It's the ego. It's the ego's attempt to, to be alive in the way that you can I mean, as, as, as you do. Okay, so you see an uh, image of the future. Oh, big time. Oh, yeah. What does that look like? charge of the whole apartment one day. Can you see that clearly? Mm-hmm. Or, yes, I can. So now, and, and feel the emotions when you, Are meeting my friends, what me is meeting my coworker. 
Cheers, my man. Yeah.
the people who harm me, who hurt me, who assault me, they're my push. That's the person I judge. I'm a worship in other words, I write down my judgments about that person and I do what Dr. Tony is doing. And I set me free because the human race cannot set me free. This man cannot set me free. That's my job. It's my responsibility. And until I become responsible for myself, responsible for my own thoughts, my own emotions, then I'm going to be dependent on the world, and that is a slow people. Because who can give me that kind of thing? No one can. It takes Responsible for my feelings. Yeah. I'm the same walking through life, it's not fair. But I'm, I'm here because I want you all to understand no matter how low you're feeling, that there is a way out. It's what you're thinking, believing, that is the cause of, of your suffering. And I can tell you honestly that no human being in the last 32 years has had the power.
connection with everyone in the room. And a kind of happiness that comes with it, like when you're not connected, when you are angry, get excited because it's unfinished business. It's nothing more than a worksheet. How many of you understand what I mean when I say I'm a worksheet? Okay, so look at the judgment of the See if you can name it. Was it fear? Was it disappointment? Was it anger? Was it rage? Just name it as closely as you can. Was it painful? Was it, was it, were you sad? So I'm, I'm angry or I'm sad, whatever the emotion. For me, I'm, I'm standing in the kitchen with Paul. I'm going to anchor there. Did you all see me in the kitchen with Paul? Okay, you've never met Paul, you've never seen my kitchen. So I've got this many kitchens, this many Pauls. Okay, so be there with me. I'm standing in the kitchen with Paul, and he lied to me. And I am furious, and I am hurt. So number one for me on that Judge and Neighbor worksheet, I'm angry at Paul because he lied to me. That simple, it's got to be short, simple concept that you can easily question, but it takes in the whole, the whole thing. He lied to me. I could say he shouted at me, I could say he interrupted me, all kinds of things, but he lied to me. That seems to be the core of it for me. So in that argument, why were you upset? What did that person say or do? I had a, a, a stalker that kept contacting me and he said he was going to kill me and, um, and he said he was going to be at the airport and it was international airport. I was in, um, I think, Holland and, um, and he said he was going to show up. There's no way I'd know who he was. And, um, um, and You know, what can I say? It's a worksheet. It's a worksheet. But obviously he didn't. <laughs> so statement one, just meditate in that situation with that person. Okay. Now close your eyes again. In that situation, what did you want from that person? 
Now, it's not what you want, not what you would want now because you're more mature, maybe. It's been several years, who knows? But what did you want from that person then? See how we're anchored in that situation? What did you want in that situation from that person? Remember, invite the ego to speak out. The ego craves to run your life. Well, this is, this is its opportunity. Just to let it speak on paper. What did you want then? from that person. How many of you need more time and statement too? Okay, so there is a cause of, would you all agree there is suffering in this world, that there is discontent? Anyone disagree with that? We call it life. There is a cause for this suffering and discontent. The cause of that suffering and discontent is what you are thinking and believing. And there is a way out of this suffering and discontent, and you're in that process now. You're going back to that time where you were, were confused or discontent or hurt, and you're identifying the thoughts you were thinking then. And that was the cause of your suffering. No one in this world can hurt me. What I'm thinking and believing about that person, what I'm thinking and believing about the world is the cause of all my suffering, and that's taking responsibility. So you are looking, as, as you fill in this worksheet, you are identifying the cause of your hurt in that situation. Any question about that? Okay, so now number three, to get what you want. Remember from statement two? To get what you want in statement three, and number three, what advice would you offer that person? What advice would you offer that person? So hold that person in your mind's eye. I'm in the kitchen. Paul is crazy. And I have to say, I was crazy. And there's this back and forth going on, and he's interrupting me, and I'm interrupting him. What advice would I offer him? He should, he shouldn't. He should stop talking. He shouldn't interrupt me. He should slow down and hear what I have to say. Okay? So what advice to get what you want? What advice would you offer that person? So to fill this in, you have to be there now. visually gives you everything you need to fill in this worksheet. When you come to understand your past, you come to understand the future.
Anyone need more time than number three? Okay, now what do you need to be happy in that situation? Get in touch with it, be there now in that argument with that person. What do you need from that person? What do you need them to say or do or be? For you to go from that emotion of anger or rage or hurt or sadness, what do you need to move from that emotion from there to happy? When you get in touch with what you need to be happy in that situation, fill in statement four. Number four. Yes. Number four, okay, so in the kitchen, I'm using my head then, not now. Because we really think if that person would just, 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 just this, I'd be happy. Yeah? Okay. If he just admit he lied to me, I'd be happy. I mean, it wouldn't have taken much for me then in that state of mind, which is the state of mind I'm filling. That state of mind is what I'm putting on the worksheet. Because that state of mind, I'm going to believe those thoughts all the rest of my life if I don't question them now. And in this process, it doesn't mean you're not going to think the thoughts. It just means that, you know, on the other end, when this class is over, on the other end of that, you may think these thoughts again and again. The difference will be the absence of suffering. You're awake. Awake to the dream. And it'll flow into all of your relationships. And your classwork. What were your thoughts about that person at the time? Paul is selfish. He's a liar. He doesn't care about me. He's deaf. So I'm collecting the thoughts then and putting them on paper because that was the cause of my suffering then. Nothing Paul said or did could cause my suffering. What I write on the worksheet, that was the cause of my suffering. Now, what is it about that person or that situation you never want to experience again? I don't ever want Paul to lie to me again.
short, simple sentences without, without losing, costing you any power. There's so many ways of saying the same thing, so you can see by my examples there about Paul. I've really covered a lot in a very simple way. And the main value in that is it makes it simple to question. If it's clunky, it's, the ego will just turn you every way but loose. Got to be direct and to the point, but this comes with practice. And this work is always, always free on ByronKatie.com, thework.com, always free. How to do it, the worksheets, you don't have to sign up for a newsletter, nothing. You just push print and it's yours. Also, there's an app that's completely free. Also, there's an app for your phone. I think it's 99 cents or something. Or maybe a dollar ninety-nine or both. Okay, so who would volunteer to read their worksheet? That's a big ask. <laughs> but how many of you, if I ask you now, which I, I am, how many of you can look back and see the thoughts on that sheet that they're not personal? They just came right out of your head. They weren't personal. They were just offered up. We're really just identifying the cause of all of our suffering in, in one particular situation. Who would volunteer to read number one? Yes. I'm frustrated with my mom because she likes me. Here, I'll give you the microphone. I am frustrated with my mom because she lied to me. Okay, so how many of you have ever been lied to? Okay, so we feel like that's a personal thought. But it's not. We've all had it in every language in the world. Thank you. She lied to me. He lied to me. Okay. So you're anchored in the situation. Your mother lied to you. Is it true? Now close your eyes. Hear her words as closely as you can. Look at you in that situation. Look at her in that situation. And look around. Are you in the kitchen? Are you in the car? On the phone? What is your situation? Are you in, in, a, in the house, in the car? In the living room. In the living room, okay. So you're in the living room. She lied to you. So really test it. Look at her here, what she's having to say. She lied to you, is it true? Yeah. Okay, so the answer is yes. Okay, so because it's yes, can you really know that it's true she lied to you? Now don't let that question talk you out of it. It's just another chance to be there now and check it out again. Yes. Good. Now witness, close your eyes, witness how you reacted when you believed the thought. She lied to you. I cried. Cried? And the emotions? Where did you feel them? In my gut. Your gut? Anything else? Anger. Anger? Did you? The question, how do, how do I react when I believe the thought in that situation? Did you say anything to her that was hurtful? Or did you give her the look? 
did you say or do anything there? Like, my mother lied to me. How do I react when I believe the thought I'm, I'm trying to put myself in your position? I defended. I cried. I'm in the living room with my mom, too. And we're arguing over um, a piece of property that, um, that was very valuable at the time that was mine, and she wanted me to give it to her. And, and then it, was, it just turned into a big mess. And then she lied to me. Okay, so that's my situation. And I hope you're all in yours as we are staying in this one. So anything else? I'm always looking for my part too, which you did really well, Donnie. I just listened. Just listened and, and felt the anger and the pain and the sadness, okay. So now close your eyes, precious. Look at your mom. Who would you be without the thought? What was it? She, she lied to me. So that means, you know these post-its we, we, we tear off and we put on the refrigerators and things and on the walls? Okay, so that's like taking the post-its off of her. So she lied to me, it's like a post-it. So close your eyes, now look at her without your story. Who would you be without the thought? She, now as you witness her, look at her eyes. Look at her face. Look at her body language as though you've never seen her before. She what looks uncomfortable. Again? She looks uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. She looks sad. So my mother lied to me. Turn it around, can you find an opposite? I lied to her, saying it was okay. okay. So it, it's just a shield, try it on, to see where it fit. In that situation, for me, I'm always like, where did I lie to my mother? in that situation. And I include any exaggeration in that. You know, in other words, where was I off? I lied to my mother. So just gently try on that shoe. Would you stay in that situation? And What did you find? I lied to her saying it was okay when it wasn't. I just feel that. And now begin to see how that pattern runs through your life. Just feel that. My mother lied to me. Can you find another turnaround? Not at the moment. Again? Not at the moment. I didn't hear you. Not at the moment. Okay, so um, my mother lied to me. My mother told me the truth. So now just be there now. Listen again. My mother told me the truth. Just try on the shoe. Okay. Okay. 
So um, let's look at two. I want. I want my mom to be stable and reliable. So you want your mother to be stable and reliable. In that situation, look at her. Does she look stable and reliable to you? No. So we're talking about that woman, not someone else's mother, and not a movie. That mother. In that situation, you want her to be reliable and stable. Is it true? It's true that I want her to be that way. So look at her. Don't change your answer. Just look what you're putting on that woman. And notice how you react, what happens when you believe the thought you want her to be stable and reliable. You see how you compare her with other people? With someone else's mother or with a movie or... <clears throat> see the comparison that goes on in your head? Past, future, past, future. So continue to look, be there now. Who would you be without the thought? I want her to be stable and reliable. Take the post-it off. Look at your mom. Your mom, not your wannabe mom. mom. feel grounded and... Well, she's not. She's not. Who would you be without... without... Who would you be without your story? I want her to be stable, reliable, grounded. See if you can find compassion. We're talking about her, Finn. Happy. Can you find acceptance? Just let her go, let her be who she is. Witness, don't change her in that situation. That when you really get to see her, as opposed to the mother in your mind's eye you want her to be, and the mother of the past. You get to see her then, now. I want her to be reliable and stable. Can you find another opposite, another turnaround? Herself. I want me. Oh, good one. Good one. I want her to be herself. Wow. That's some shoe to try on. But we're just talking about that situation. That way you really get to see and witness. It opens a space. We have no idea what another person is suffering. I want her to be more stable and reliable. Turn it around. I want me to be. Stable and reliable? 
in that situation. When you try that on, is that as true or truer? True. So of the two of you, what would be your real choice? I want her to be reliable or stable, or in that situation, I want me to be reliable and stable. In that situation, I want her to be stable and reliable. Or you. She's not going there. You saw it. You have no power over your mother. You know that by now. There is someone you can deal with. And you wake up with her every day, and it's you. And you live with her every day. It's you. And how much space does your mother take up in your head? That's not your real mother, that's, that's dreamed. Your real mother in that situation was not stable and she was not reliable. And I go back and look at, she was reliably not reliable. <coughs> Trust it. Sometimes, as a human race, we're not reliable. You believe it on your mom, you'll believe it on your children someday, should you ever have them. Or your partner, you'll put it on your partner. So we do the work with one human being, and it flows across your entire life because you're the one waking up. If you can't see us, then there's not a lot of hope for those of us in the world. Understand what I'm saying? You will be reliable and stable. And that's enough of a life's work. That's asking a lot, but you were asking of your mom. She thought she could do it just like that. Not so easy to walk in those shoes. So you focus on you. And for me, I, I, uh, I take on this practice so I can say yes to an invitation like this to come here and pass along this gift. Let's look at, um, Donnie touched on it, but I was, agoraphobic. I couldn't even, it was so difficult for me to leave not just my house, but my bedroom for more than 10 years. It was horrible. And I had three children. So as I do my work, they, they do theirs. We're a very close family now. I wouldn't think it would be possible. So let's look at um, three, advice. Um, mom should listen and be willing to understand. Your mom should listen and, your mom should listen and? Be willing to understand. Okay. Your mom should listen and be willing to understand what you're saying and what you mean in that situation. She should listen and be willing to understand you. Is it true? Yes. Can you absolutely know that it's true that she needs to just shift like that? Or even that she could? If she wanted to, if she tried her hardest, her, we're talking about her. To have an open mind to. That's, that would not be your mother in that situation. That's your pretend mother in your head. Now we're looking at reality. 
No. See how crazy it is? Notice how you treat her. Notice what happens when you believe this thought. How do you react? Resentful. Notice how hard you start to get? Look, hard, and that's not you, you're soft. Who would you be without this thought? Without these requirements? On this poor woman that is just be the best human being she can be with what she's got going. You're asking who I would be? Who would you be without this thought that your mom should listen and be willing to understand you? I would be willing to understand. You'd be willing to understand. More open-minded. Lighter. Connected. with your mom just the way she is, connected. It doesn't mean you have to give in. It doesn't mean anything, just you're connected. That's a place of understanding and compassion and strength. Power. Love. Forgiveness. So let's turn this around, I. I should listen and be willing to understand her. Feel how the power has shifted? It's soft, it's gentle, connected. Can you find another turn around? My mom should not. <laughs> My mother should not listen. listen. Be willing to understand me. Look at her. How can she? Look what you're expecting. You're asking her to do what you weren't able to do. But it's never too late for you. One family member changes, authentically changes, when they do this work and the family falls. I don't ever expect them to. It, it just works that way. Sanity begins to enter that one and it just spreads. It's a kind of strength that no one can take from you. So let's look at the next one. I need mom to say, okay, I'll figure it out. I'm your mom. Close your eyes, look at your mom in that situation. Is that what you need to be happy? Yes. And look at her. Does she look like someone that can supply that in that situation? 
Yes. Really? Look at her just the way she was. Don't change her. She's unreliable. She's... How do you react? What happens when you believe this thought onto your mother that you need your mom too? What were the words? Okay, I'll figure it out. I am your mom. So who would you be without placing this requirement, this, these post-its on her? Who would I be? Mm -hmm. Take them off of her and look at her. I really want you to get that fourth question, so close your eyes and look at your mom. Just the way she was, don't change her. Don't make nice with it. You see her? Just the way she was. And you, you to be happy, you want that woman to say, okay, I'll figure it out and I'll be your mom. Who would you be with that human being, your mother, without your story, without putting that on her? Now drop the story and look at her just the way she was. Or what would you be without that story? That requirement, those requirements. I would be reliable on myself. Yes, of the two of you, you finally found someone you can trust. It's not for her to do. But there's one now that can do that from here. Neither one of you could do it then. So how would you turn this around? To be happy, I need me to say, okay. I, me, myself, I will figure it out. And I'll be my mom. Interesting. I like trying it on. Mother you. And it's never too late. You start now. I started at 43. And I stumbled around like a little baby. But I stopped relying on, relying on the world to give me what I couldn't give me. And I found it wasn't so easy. But I stayed with it. I mothered me. Your mother has given you a great gift. She's your push. You want a mother? Be it. Can you see another turnaround? Be it lovingly, like go through your worksheet when the session's over and sit in it and it'll show you how to mother yourself. It'll show you how to be with your mom as well. It's a practice. You see another way of turning this around? I don't need. 
I don't need her to figure it out. And I don't need her to say, she'll be my mom. And did you even ask her? Ask her what? Well, you know, where I'm coming from is, you know, this power of asking. You know, when, when, when this work found me and I was finally able, when my mother was finally speaking to me, <laughs> uh, and I, I, um, I said, I love you, and it was authentic. I never thought I'd experience that. It was authentic, and she went, oh, 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 no, oh, no, oh, no, don't, don't, don't. It was like I burned her with something that was just really hot. I don't need my mom to say, okay, I'll figure it out. I'll be your mom. So see, close your eyes and look at her there. So take that off of her. Take that requirement off of her. And figure it out. Be your mom. We're told our mothers should be there for us. But, you know, we grow up and, 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 and hold these same beliefs. So how can we? So the next one. Anyone see another turnaround? The, the, yeah. So then the other turnaround, there's another turnaround, which is the um, mom needs me to say, okay, you figure it out, you'll be my mom. So I need my mother to say, I okay, need Okay, you figure it out. Wait, so start over. You... Mom needs me to say, okay, you'll figure it out, you'll be my mom. You'll be my mom. Try it on. These turnarounds don't have to make sense, but there's one little flavor there that makes a lot. You know, just we're just trying on the shoe. The shoe's been on me for a while. Yeah. yeah. I need me to say to I need me to say to mom, okay, I'll figure it out. I'll be my mom. Okay, so remember this one's about happiness, to be happy in that situation. I need me to say, we're just trying it on, okay? I'll figure it out, I'll be my mom. And then just kind of flounder around and find out that she doesn't know how, you don't know how, no one knows how. How do you, how do you feed you? What kind of nutrition are you giving you? How, how, how are you showing up for classes? You know, how are you, how are you mothering you? It's not easy for some of us. But it's, depending on other people. Okay, let's look at the next one, sweetheart. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave all that to you. Um, my uh, mom is unreliable, unchangeable, mean, a liar, pretentious. 
Okay, so in that situation, this, is, this isn't your whole life. This is in that situation, try it on. I was, or I am. I am unreliable. So can you, can you see how unreliable you were? You were crying. So, can you find me? Snippy. I was being snippy. Yeah. A liar. Okay, so where is it that, that, um, that you were lying? It could be even in an expression on your face. It doesn't have to be just a straight up lie. It can be, but, but where was I lying? I said it was okay. And pretendish. Pretendish. And pretendish. Yeah, you said it was okay, and you were pretendish. Okay. Okay. We can always justify ours because they drive us to it. But that's not. We can take more responsibility than that, and this practice supports us to take that on. It shows us exactly how to be. There's a thing I call living turnarounds. And when you, when you are in a situation like this, with your mom, let's say, or anyone, these turnarounds will just turn up for you. And it's, it's, it's almost magical the way it happens because you get it so deeply that it begins, sanity begins to take your life over. That's what happens. So the next one. I don't ever want my mom to lie to me again. I don't ever want her to tell me she's going to do something if she's not. Okay, so I'm willing to, and read both of them again. I'm willing to. I'm willing for my mom. I'm willing for my mom not to lie to me. I'm willing for my mom to lie to me. Lie to me and tell me she's going to do something if she's not going to. Yes, because if it still bothers you, if you're not compassionate in those situations, it's simply another worksheet. I look forward to, and read it that way. I look forward to my mom lying to me. I look forward to my mom telling me she's going to do something if she's not going to. See, that's exciting. It's just another worksheet. That's it. That's it, and it's not done until it's done. Is there anyone here that's never lied? It doesn't happen. So it's okay if the world completely lies to me, but it's not okay if I do. The world's here to push me to get what I came to, we could say, to this earth. Because you can see the trees, I mean, it's just, it's everything's so beautiful here, but what we're thinking and believing about our moms and the world, that could use a little work. Okay, precious. Um, I look forward to, and read them both again. Oh, you did, didn't you? Okay, see how it feels now. Do it one more time. I look forward to my mom lying to me and I look forward to her telling me she's going to do something if she's not going to. Yeah. People lie. People make promises they don't fulfill. It's life. Where do I do that myself? That's my work. And then I'm very humble as I travel about with the human race. Very. Thank you. Thank you for your courage. So any, uh, any questions about the work? 
it's, it, it really is self-work. It's, it's, um, it's, um, it's yours. The answers are within you. You'll find them out in the world too when they make sense. And when they don't, the more this becomes a practice, the, the more understanding and compassionate you become, the wiser you become, the lighter you become. And your life picks up everywhere because you're not walking around with this. Yes. Thank you. This is one question I had in all the discussion is that at the moment of betrayal, in retrospect, we can go back and think through this in, in the process. At the moment of betrayal or whatever this event is, the ego very quickly jumps up and... That's why number six is I am willing to, I look forward to. Life is, we're in training. And the training is, um, you know, we could say forgiveness. And forgiveness, forgiveness for me is seeing that what I thought happened didn't. In this case, my mother was the cause of my problem. And now I see that I was the cause of my problem. So actually, I thought she did it. So there's nothing to forgive. I did that. So now I've got my work. And I can see that, like my mother, I was doing the best that I could possibly do when I consider what I was thinking and believing. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a worksheet, and, and no one has to do it. No one has to do it. It's just a way out of suffering, and when you're up against it, you know, maybe you'll remember this session, and that you just go to byronkatie.com, push a button, or come to Ronnie. Okay, any other questions? So um, my understanding of the book is it's about like letting go and letting the world be the way it is and um, just uh, um, let things be ultimately the way it is, not try to change the world. <laughs> because the world is the way it is. And letting the world be what it is, because it is. If I try to change the world, then I become, in the, in the sense that we're looking at it, like changing the people in our world, it's, it's, it's war. It's war, it's literally war. And we become we can become old and bitter in our youth and hard. In other words, protective. And, um, yeah, to let it be. And I don't try to change people in my world. Doing this work is, is like, I've done my own work. So as you're doing yours, I'm meeting your mother out of an understanding that it seems you're beginning to step into. I see your mother as an innocent human being with an amazing daughter, and she's lost. And I see a daughter who's amazing, and she's lost. And only you can find her. And, and that's what you, you know, the term is maturity. We don't grow up in the body. It's not like that. It's here. Maturity is just a kind way of being in the world. And I think the Beatles had it right. Just let it be. <laughs> yeah. Because it be what it be. And my anger or resentment isn't going to change it. It's just going to make it harder for me and the people I, I run up against. But we've got power. There's so much power in this. You know, like in the system, we've got the power to vote. And in ourselves, we have the power to know the difference between right and wrong. And when we're, when we're not right with ourselves, we feel it. We feel it in our gut. 
And if we say or do, or I'll just put it here, if I say or do anything that is dishonest, not authentic, or untrue, I feel guilty. It could be anything from a little rub to another one. And I can clean it up in a moment. I can say, oh, you know, I exaggerated when I said that. Or I might say, you know, <laughs> that's just not true. What I just said, it's just not true. The truth is, so you see, I'm leaving no breadcrumbs behind me. It's like no past. And as I do this work, it's like the past comes into the moment because there's nothing I feel guilty of behind me. And let's say if I was cruel to my mother in that situation where I didn't hear you were, but let's say I was, I was cruel in any way in that situation, I'm going to feel guilt. And then I'm going to get angrier. Because look what she pushed me to. You see, that's crazy. It's hurtful. So if I feel guilt, you know, guilt is, if I don't clean it up, admit it, make it right where I can, where I'm able to, then that guilt ultimately, and this is so important, it is the breeding ground for addiction. It is like the perfect soil for addiction. So the more of this work you do, the freer you become of insane choices, hurtful choices. And I never, you know, I thought, I didn't expect that when this work found me, but the benefits are immeasurable. Any other questions? Um, the, can you tell us the difference between enabling and letting things be? Like the enabling someone. So what's an example of an en en enabling someone? Um, maybe someone might be um, doing something hurtful and you just let the uh, watch and let be. Um, uh, let's say someone's being harming another human being and and I just let it be um, that wouldn't I'd need a situation because so many situations are coming to my mind what's an, what's an, an example of someone of an unkind act that I might just let it be here's a story okay when this work found me my sons were, were, um, were like 19 and 17, okay, and we had this large glass coffee table in our home, and they were, I don't recommend this, it's just the state of mind I was in, but they were arguing, and then it accelerated, and then they started grabbing each other and fighting and rolling around and, and, and I just, I did nothing. I just watched them. And I listened. And they were saying, Mom, Mom, make him stop. So here's why I did nothing to answer your question. I could say, you're going to hurt yourself. They already knew that. I've been telling them that's, that since they were that high. That glass coffee table could break and just cut arteries, everything else. But I've been telling them that. And they've seen glass break. And they've had bloody feet. They already know that. They shouldn't be fighting. Well, they already knew that. I mean, what could I say that would not reduce them to idiots. Telling them what they already knew. So I just couldn't. And when they, at some point, they saw me, they said later, they told me, Mom, I looked at you and you were just, 
there was almost a smile on your face and, and you just, it just made me stop. Relationships shift like that. Otherwise, I would have, I, I, prob, I, I would have stopped them. I just couldn't think of one thing that those two grown men <laughs> uh, didn't know. So it depends on the circumstances and what's in my head, but I could have jumped in and made it worse. I mean, I couldn't say one thing they didn't already know. So it's up to you. You do your work and, and again, at another time I could have stopped them. I can't figure out what to stop and what not to stop. I just do what's right in me, like, like, like being with your mom next time could just, sh you, you, you might just notice this major shift. And if you do this daily, just even 10 minutes, just like you would do your homework, because this will shift your life. When I was in, um, I was, I was, what? Maybe 45 years old, maybe older, I don't know, I don't, I, I don't recall. This work found me, I was 43 years old. So shortly after that, I, I was very dyslexic. And so when I went to an um, Arizona State in Flagstaff, it's university now, it was State College then, and, and I was, I was, I could not pass one course. And I would hide out in the dorm, it was even, I was so terrified I couldn't even find the rooms on the campus. And I just kept it a big secret, lived in the dorm, and, um, and for a year, two semesters. And, um, <clears throat> So then, at, then that was the end of my college. And then, um, when I was, after the work found me, you know, I, I was just, it was before 50 years old anyway. But um, I, someone said, you should, go to, you, you should go to school. And I just heard it, and I went to school. And I took, I, I think, 12 or 14 units and um, enrolled, and all I did was listen to the lectures, follow the simple direction, and I got A's through everything. That's the difference between this and letting go. But I, I don't let go. It's like I do the work, and this lets go. And it leaves this mind that's open to what is kind, what is valuable, and what makes sense. It's just so radical. The teacher would say, read the chapter, there's a test Friday. And my mind didn't go, it can't be that simple. I have to read the chapter five times. I'm, you know, I'm dyslexic. I did, 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 and I read it. And did, 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 did. I followed the simple directions. I read the chapter one time, for example, whatever they said to do. I just did. I read it one time. I'd go in and get an A. And I didn't expect to know the answers. I would just read the question, wait, and write what was there. There was no interference. So um, I don't know how that valuable that is to you, but it is the, the difference between, you know, I don't know my mom's in my head going crazy and all, but there she was in Flagstaff. You know, her body was in California. I was in Arizona and she was living here. Okay, so um, anyone have a one-liner they'd like to work through? Would you like to try one? Uh-huh. Sure. Um, back to my mother again. Um, <clears throat> I'm upset with my mother because she's like somewhat weak by letting my brother do whatever he likes to do. So she lets your brother do what he likes to do. <clears throat> 
So your, your brother runs your mother. Is it true? Yes. Okay, so sit in the situation. You see the situation? He's, he's off track, but she's just letting him do it, right? Is that it? Yeah, yes. Okay. So your mother lets your brother do what he wants to do. Can you absolutely know that it's true? She lets him do what he wants to do. In that situation, remember, we're not talking about his whole life. Just, uh-huh. Overall, overall, yes, like she's like, she gets him out of trouble all the time, so yeah. So how do you react in that situation where she's doing that? How do you react? What happens when you believe the thought she always gets him out of trouble? I get upset. I get upset because, uh, now notice I get upset because it's not the answer to how do you react. Okay. So see the difference? I get upset and what else? I get upset. I feel like it's unfair. That's my reaction to it. I feel it's unfair for both sides. Now feel it in your stomach. Feel it in your chest. Where is it? Your stomach? Your chest? Where is it? It's in chest. Yes. Sometimes in the stomach as well, but mostly chest. Feel it in your chest. Now notice how much space does it take over? Does it go up to your neck, your shoulders? The whole chest. Yeah, it's the whole chest. Okay. So when you're meditating, get in touch with all the emotions because when you think the thought and you see the images of past future there, you're watching a movie, right? Past future. That's not life. That's not here now. That's past, that's future with your mom doing it then, and now she's doing it, and she's gonna continue, okay? So you're watching that movie, okay? Now, tell me, is it your mom that is causing that stress, or is it the movie you're sitting in? It's the movie I'm sitting in, for sure, the movie I'm sitting in. You got it? Got it? I got it. Done. If you ever feel upset, just know that they are not the cause of your stress, that you need to sit down and get yourself straight. Who would you be without this past future? Just look. Look at her with him. Look at their dance. Look at the dance, just stay out of it and witness who would you be without this movie going on of past future, watch. I wouldn't be me. If it... but, but look at them, look at you, look at them. If it, did it, it was about looking at the past and future? Like without past and future, just look at them. Just looking at them at this, at this situation, just to be stressed, it wouldn't be me. You see their shtick? That's how they love each other. That's how they play. I mean, that's a, might be very painful for them, but that's their relationship. But it doesn't hurt you. It's this movie of past, future in your head that's hurting you. Okay, so just stay there until you get connected. Look at them do their thing. You can get so connected. And you can be so glad it's not you. That's, that is your connection, that's, that's, how, that's how they bond. And I'm accepting it. And that's how they bond whether you accept it or not? But you get to watch that kind of relationship and how they bond and, and stay connected. So um, she lets him do anything he wants to do. So turn it around. What's the word you would use? You know, to, to me, what honey? It's, my mom lets my brother do what he wants to do, turn it around. My mom doesn't. Yeah, my mom doesn't let my brother do what he wants to do. Okay, so try the shoe on. Find examples. As in, like, my, Give me, give me an example. Okay. 
Okay, well, where I'm going with it is my, I had a relationship with one of my sons like that, so I'm always in this. So, I didn't always do what? I didn't always do that. So where do you go with that? Now, where is it that your mother doesn't, where she draws the line? I haven't seen the line yet. <laughs> okay, so, so keep looking. Maybe an expression where she doesn't want to, and she just gives in and does it anyway. Okay. Uh, for example, she doesn't want to pay for his speeding tickets, but she does it anyways. She doesn't want to, you know, financially support him for everything, but she does it anyways. Yeah. That's their bond. That's how they show that they love each other. You know, I'm in your mother's position with that son that I was talking about. I really thought he'd stop loving me. I really thought if I didn't do that, like pay his tickets, the, you know, those kinds of things, that if I didn't, it cost me his driver's license. He could never get a job. He'd put da 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 he get the alcohol and drugs and da 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 Same mindset. And now that with his, his, his daughter, her granddaughter, she feels like if she doesn't support him, she'll never see her granddaughter. So my mother's letting him do what he wants to do. She's not letting him do what he wants to do. You might have a talk with her. Mother, does it frighten you not to? I really would like to know what you're afraid of. I'm not suggesting you do it, but this can open up conversation where she finally has an ally, as opposed to someone that gives her the look, like, what are you doing, kind of look. Where she finally has someone that understands. That's bonding. I'll, I'll try that. I'll definitely try that. Well, do your whole worksheet first, because those living turnarounds will show you how to have a conversation where there's no blame, there's no shame, there's connection, and this sense of how can I help? And just listening is, I find it to be the most powerful, the most powerful gift I've received out of this whole thing, it's just to be a a listener with no advice. I've got some experience, but I have no advice. <coughs> okay, is it about time? Yeah. Okay, so um, I appreciate your presence and your focus here. I'm, I'm, I'm so impressed with your ability to, uh, to follow this and. Um, and thank you for that, and and thank you, Ronnie, for for bringing me here to meet your students and your faculty. Yeah, let's give a round of applause for our guest speaker. <laughs> let's give a round of applause for Stephen also for his work there, and for everyone for coming, for making this happen. I really appreciate it. I hope this was helpful to everyone. Uh, and you know, now that you learned how to do the work, you can teach other people how to do the work also. This is really a each one, teach one. Free yourself, free the world kind of thing, you know? So, um, yeah, so just thank you all. And thank you all for coming on a Friday that was really, you know, one of the most stressful weeks of your, of your day, of your week. So just, I really appreciate it, okay? Have a nice day.